So as I make this video, Hello Neighbor 2 hasn't even been fully released, and already some speedrunners have been able to beat the game in less than 3 minutes. Let's check it out. Hey guys, and welcome back to another speedrun video here on Tetrabit Gaming. So, Hello Neighbor 2 is set to release tomorrow, I believe, as this video goes live, but those that bought the deluxe version of the game got early access. And speedrunners, being speedrunners, wasted no time to try and beat the game as quickly as possible. Now, I should mention that Tiny Build did provide me with an early copy of this game, but other than that, this video is certainly not sponsored or anything like that. Though, they did give me their blessing to speedrun this game and promised to not get in the way like they did with the first Hello Neighbor game. Anyways, slap that like button and buckle up, this is a fast speedrun. Let's see how runners have already beaten the game in under 3 minutes. Alright, so the time for speedrunning Hello Neighbor 2 starts as soon as we skip the opening intro cutscene. I'm sure the story is nice and all, but we don't have time to deal with that here. So first we load into this barn where normally, I'm sure there's a puzzle we have to solve or something, but we can actually just skip all of that. By jumping on the hood of this van and then popping inside of it, by jumping towards the back, quickly crouching and then spamming the jump button, we can actually clip right through the van to take us outside the barn too. And then after running to the front of the barn here, we can hit a cutscene trigger to quickly complete this entire section in only like 15 seconds. Then, after skipping a pair of cutscenes, as soon as we load back into the new station, we want to pause and then load the last save. This is something you do often in speedrunning this game, as basically every time, the last save will actually bring you to where you need to go next in the game, so it essentially serves as a quick, fast travel for us. And as such, the game now brings us to this blue house here. I'm sure there's more context to this, but we're speedrunning, so none of that matters. Anyways, we can walk through the main door here, make a quick right, avoiding the police officer guy, and then by simply crouching into this door and then standing up, we can easily clip right through the door. Yeah, it really is as easy as that. You'd think with that array of locks on this door, it would be a bit more secure. Now as a quick side note, if you're unlucky, there's a chance that the police guy will spawn outside or near the front door when you load into this area, which can be an obstacle as he doesn't really seem to go away anytime soon. But simply just reload your save and he should respawn somewhere else and you should be good to go. Anyways, back on track here, after clipping into the basement, we can grab this newspaper, skip another cutscene, and we don't even need to grab the resulting key as we can just reload the next save. And yeah, I kinda have to slow things down as the speedrun goes faster than I can even talk and explain what's going on. Anyways, next we respawn at the front of the museum building, which I guess serves as the main building in this game as we revisit this place quite often. And this is where we eventually see Mr. Peterson, the original neighbor from Hello Neighbor 1, as he is found patrolling the place. But that doesn't happen until later, so for now all we really need to do here is run up to the entrance and grab the shovel here to officially end the game's night one in under a minute. Then next, after another routine of skipping a cutscene and reloading a previous save, we get to the bakery section of the game, probably the most difficult and time-consuming part of this speedrun. After running through the front doors, we can sneak into the kitchen area, pickpocket the key off Chef Mommy over here, use it to open this fridge, yeah, I don't know who locks up a fridge like this, then we can grab this valve wheel as well as the fish treat inside of the fridge, and CAT! Aw, oh, what a cute little kitty, but this cat has one of the four cash register buttons that we need to collect. So let's give Imbir here, which means ginger by the way, a treat, and we'll come back in a bit. Now next, we have to jump onto this fence thing. After you climb up here, you have to like slightly tap in the opposite direction, as otherwise you'll just vault right over it. But after getting up, we have to jump across onto this awning and then break into the second floor via this window. Once inside, we have to place the valve wheel on this boiler and turn it, and then make our way into this room over here. So normally, I guess we'd have to figure out a way to get a key to open this book on this table, but thankfully there's a little trick we can do to get the cash register button inside without it. Basically, all we have to do is walk from this direction towards the table and book, and then crouch. And, as you can see, for a split second we can actually see inside of the book. And this split second is all we need, as if you spam the button to pick up an item, if everything is lined up nicely, the button will be yours. It's pretty precise, but after a while, you'll get the hang of doing it. 
Unfortunately, you have to be pretty good at it, as if you try for too long, Chef Mom will come upstairs to try and catch you. You can hide under the table or in the adjacent room, but yeah, she just becomes one big time sink. And if she does catch you after collecting this button, there's a good chance the game will take it away from you, and you'll have to fiddle around with the book again. So, uh, yeah, try your best not to be caught. Anyways, after getting that first and most annoying button, next we want to return to the previous room and grab the pair of scissors found on the desk. With these, we can cut out the patch on the wall here to reveal the clock hand found within, and we of course take this hand to the clock in the same room right here. Now we have to set up the clock, but to what time? Well, apparently since it's always 10.35 here according to these digital clocks, we have to set this clock up here accordingly, and this gives us yet another button. Then next, since I guess we shut off the boiler previously, the plants here no longer receive enough water from it, and this lets us cut up this plant in the middle for the third button found within. Then we can drop back down, grab the last button from the kitty, as well as this fire extinguisher which will play a major part in the rest of the speedrun. Now with all four buttons in our possession, we go to the cash register at the front of the bakery, slap those buttons on, and input the code 1576 to open it giving us the key hidden inside. Alright, quick post-production edit here, as I was just finishing up this video, another crazy bakery skip exploit was discovered and has shaved off even more time from the world record. So, you can actually use the fire extinguisher you find in the kitchen as you climb onto this shelving here, and if the stars align, you will actually end up clipping inside of the cash register. It is a bit tricky to pull off, but if you change the game to run at 30 frames per second, it becomes a bit more consistent. And yeah, once you get stuck inside, you can look around and grab the key within, ultimately skipping having to do everything else we just talked about. Absolutely wild. Anyways, after another save reload, we are now taken back to the museum, and this key actually lets us open the door at the front to finally give us internal access. We say a quick hello and goodbye to Mr. Peterson as we make our way to the second floor, and then here behind this table. Now next we have to perform probably the most broken glitch in the game, the fire extinguisher clip. By crouching, climbing up onto the table, and then using the fire extinguisher while moving towards the wall, yeah, we can clip right on through as if the wall never existed. You do have to be a bit careful though, as if you clip the wrong way, you can actually end up getting stuck in the wall, which is no good. Anyways, once in the room, we can grab this picture of Mr. Peterson's family, which I'm sure is a big plot point to the story, but oh well, we skip and we reload another save. Next, we are taken to this lakeside home, where I don't know what this dude's problem is, but he will literally shoot at you with birdshot if he sees you. I mean, I guess yeah, maybe we shouldn't be walking on this guy's property, so good thing we have the fire extinguisher, as with it we don't actually have to walk at all, as we can just boost our way up to this guy's roof. By holding down the jump button and timing some fire extinguisher blasts just right, we can actually gain some height with this. It's pretty precise timing, and if your blast is too long or too short, you'll drop to the ground. It is a bit tricky at first, but with some practice, once you get the rhythm down, it's not all that bad. Anyways, with this trick, we can boost our way up to this ledge as a bit of a safety in case we mess up, and then one more time we can make our way up to this section where we can find a shovel. Then, after dropping back down, you'll want to use the fire extinguisher boost to not die, but even if you do, it only wastes a few seconds, so not a big deal. And now with this shovel, we can dig up this dirt patch to reveal a safe with a number lock on it. Thankfully, the code is always the same, 80164, and after putting it in, we can open up the safe to find yet another key inside. Then, after another save reload, we are back at the museum, and this time, on the second floor, we go to the left to open this door with the key that we just got. And in this room, we have yet another safe with another passcode, but once again, the code is thankfully always the same, 1135. And opening this safe gets us a camera? Yeah, I definitely need to actually play this game through for real to try and understand what any of this means. Now next we spawn into this estate, which I believe is like the mayor's house or something, and here we have to do some more fire extinguisher boosting to get up onto the roof here, and then we do a small single boost and jump across to make our way onto the balcony. We then enter the second floor, and by crouching up against this wall, getting up, and boosting forward using the fire extinguisher, that's another wall clipped through and we get yet another key. Yeah, we definitely don't spend much time in that building. And now we are on to the grand finale of the game, back once again at the museum. 
We once again make our way inside and onto the second floor, but we don't even need the key that we just got, as by jumping onto this thing and then jumping backwards and spamming the jump button, we can actually clip right into the museum's attic. Yeah, this game is pretty broken. Once up here, we have to throw our fire extinguisher up onto the cage, as we'll need it later, and then we can grab this key and use it to open up this locked door here, which results in another cutscene. Once that cutscene skipped, we can jump and crouch mid-air to get up onto the windowsill here. If you've played Gmod or any Source game, you probably know what I'm talking about. And then from here, you can just jump backwards and spam the jump button, and if you're in the right spot, you'll actually clip and climb your way up on top of the cage. And then up here, we can get our fire extinguisher back and do one last clip with it in the corner of this room to clip us outside of the building. And then we just have to run all the way to the front entrance door, and that's it! That is time for the speedrun, as yeah, that there is the end of the game. So after about 4 hours of learning and practicing the speedrun, discounting load times, I was able to get a time of just under 5 minutes. And although this is pretty quick in its own right, the current world record is about half this time at a whopping 2 minutes and 49 seconds held by Lemon. A few of the top runners were trading world records several times over the last few days, each time shaving more and more seconds off the record. But yeah, Hello Neighbor 2 is pretty broken. I can't say I've ever heard of a game having a speedrun this quick before it was even fully released. Hmm, I wonder if this game has anything in common with another indie horror game with a ton of glitches that was beaten incredibly fast. But what I can say is that this was actually a really fun game to speedrun. There is a bit of a learning curve, but getting the tricks to work was really satisfying, and this being such a short speedrun made it really easy to keep replaying. If you'd like to try speedrunning this game yourself, I'll leave a link to the Hello Neighbor Discord server down in the description. And while you're here, check out my speedrun video on the first Hello Neighbor game, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.